So we're going to start with Jamie's family. And the first family we have coming up are the Bellamy's. Uh, if that name sounds familiar, it's because Paul Bellamy might have been one of your uh, grade school gym teachers. Yeah. Don't worry, we got him to not wear his wind pants today. <laughs> so, looking good, Paul. <laughs> so, I believe Karen and Paul are going to come up. Um, Jamie's mom and stepdad uh, talking on behalf of um, Jesse and Adam. Thank you. Well, I just wanted to come up and say, or try to say a few words today. Paul's going to be my rock, and he's going to take over if I falter. But I'm going to give it a, I'm going to give it a go. So, I just wanted to say it's such a special day for Paul and I, Adam and Jesse, and both of our families. Uh, it's so wonderful to celebrate with all of you. Um, Jamie and Greg look absolutely fabulous. Um, I just can't tell you how happy that uh, we are for you today. You both look so happy, and the friendship and love you share is so obvious. It's truly been a joy to watch your relationship evolve over the past few months. Greg, from the first moment that Jamie mentioned, uh, mentioned you to me, I saw a spark in her eye. It must have been after one of your first few dates, and she casually mentioned that she'd been seeing somebody new. Uh, when I pressed her for more information, uh, she told me that this was a guy who was someone she knew in high school, uh, he went to Sir Winston and lived south of the QEW. <laughs> I overlooked that. Uh, then she smiled, giggled, and she said, actually, Mom, he was someone I had a crush on back then. <laughs> That's when I saw that first spark. And truly, I have seen it in her eyes ever since. And I can't tell you how happy it makes me to know that Jamie has found someone that she loves, that makes her happy, that makes her laugh, that excites her, that excites her to no end, and that she's found somebody that she truly wants to spend the rest of her life with. So, Greg, I thank you for that. You are a fine young man. We are thrilled to have you join our family, and we welcome you with open arms. Um, <laughs> It's also been a, a, a great pleasure to get to know your family better, Bob and Kathy, Jordy, Kate, and we look forward to many more family gatherings together. It's been fabulous so far. So lastly, I just wanted to say Jamie. Um, you're just as I <laughs> do <you> step in. <laughs> okay, hang on. Okay, I'm gonna do this. Jamie, you were just as I ever imagined you on your wedding day. Um, you look absolutely beautiful, so happy, and so deserving. You've put so much thought and effort into every detail today, and the, the wedding, the details, everything to, is you and Greg to a T, and you've created an amazing memory for yourself. You really have. I also wanted to say that I am so proud of the person that you have become and the life that you have chosen for yourself and with Greg. Anyone who knows Jamie knows she is the kindest, gentlest soul who shows great empathy and compassion towards others. She's so soft-spoken, easygoing, and yet such a fun-loving nature. There are many things that I admire about Jamie, too many to get into, but one, um, one simple phrase that I can say is, don't confuse nice with weak. In addition to her sweetness, Jamie is a strong, intelligent, adventurous, hard-working young woman with her own ideas, a strong sense of who she is, what she wants, and always has a plan on how to make that happen, often without ever, ever asking for help. You make us so proud every day. So. <laughs> so, in addition to congratulating you and Greg on your on your marriage and starting a new life together. I read somewhere that love is a friendship that has caught fire. So please raise your glass and toast with me. May your fire stay strong and bright 
and filled with love and laughter for the next 50 years or so. Congratulations. <laughs> Hi everyone, I am Ashley. Uh, I'm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's what I expect when I say my name. Um, I have known Jamie for a long time and I am one of her co maids of honor tonight. I'm just going to get right into this. <laughs> um, I've known Jamie since she moved to St. Catharines in grade one and we've been best friends ever since. Right from the start of our friendship, it was easy to see what kind of a person Jamie was. One day during our first year of friendship, I convinced Jamie that we only needed to be friends with each other. So we told our entire first grade class that we didn't want to be their friends. <laughs> the next day, my only friend was Jamie, but everyone still loved her. <laughs> so I ended up having to write I'm sorry cards to our entire first grade class just to get back on their good graces. However, Jamie had never lost them. Um, <laughs> she had a heart of gold, and when pressured to be mean, she couldn't even be. <laughs> she didn't have a mean bone in her body. It was her kindness, her love, and her friendship that made me want to be a better person. After tw over 20, over, over 20 years of friendship, <laughs> Jamie is more than just a best friend to me. She's the sister I never had. She's a confidant that knows all my deepest, darkest secrets. She's a mentor that I go to when I need advice or someone to show me both sides of the story. And she holds a very special place in my heart, no matter how much distance is between us. And we couldn't ask for a better husband for our friend. We know that with Greg, Jamie will laugh for the rest of her life as long as she's smiling and happy, then we know she's in good hands. And with Greg's dance moves, we know that he'll always sweep her off her feet. <laughs> now, Jamie and I have always had this thing that if we ever, for some reason, ended up in jail, we would be each other's one call. But we also knew that if we ever ended up in jail, we were probably going to be sitting on that bench together. <laughs> So Jamie, let me tell you, I am so glad you finally found someone to bail us out. <laughs> now Lindsay's going to lead us through a toast. Hello. I want to say thank you for letting me take a few moments to toast my very dear friend Jamie and her new husband, Greg. Uh, I just want to say, have you ever seen a more radiant, beautiful bride? <laughs> Greg, you clean up pretty nice too. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Lindsay and I am so honored to be here today as Jamie's co-maid of honor. I have known Jamie since the tender age of 13 and over the years she's quickly become my confidant and my best friend. I have loved watching Jamie and, or sorry, watching and hearing about Jamie and Greg's relationship blooming over the past few years. Here's a couple that know what a lasting love takes honesty, respect, and a solid friendship as a base. It has been really great getting to know Greg. He's friendly, smart, and best of all, funny. Greg, you have made Jamie laugh every day, and I know you continue to keep her smiling and happy for the rest of her life. We couldn't ask for anything better for our best friend. Jamie, I'm so blessed to have you as my best friend. You are like a sister to me, and I'm so happy to share this once in a lifetime moment with you. You have so many qualities I admire, your ability to see the best in people, your sweet, kind heart, and the way you always know the right thing to say in any situation. I will always cherish our friendship. And so a toast to the bride and groom. Wait, wait. May you both always find the good in every situation. 
And continue to spread joy to each other and laugh together every day. And may you both live happily ever after. And enjoy every moment tonight. We, we love you guys. Bye. Cheers. Jamie just told me recently that when they were walking down the aisle that J your father was wearing a thong. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like this can't be the right information, but anyways, uh, here is uh, Steve Toms. L let's just dispel that right now. That's way too ugly. Um, I'm pretty nervous, um, so bear with me. I got, uh, Karen, you did a great job. I thought you'd fall apart before then. So, uh, wow, uh, you set the bar pretty high. Um, before I uh, get into what I wrote here, I just want to take the opportunity to thank everybody for coming out today. I really appreciate it. I know Jamie and Greg really appreciate it. Uh, two wonderful kids, and uh, having all you here to help celebrate this day is just tremendous. We really appreciate that. Um, I'm a, I tend to overthink things. Uh, I got a bit of a theme today, and my, my theme when I think about my daughter is, is kind of twofold. It, it's, uh, it's about luck and it's about magic. And uh, when I think about Jamie, I think about those two things a lot. And uh, my friend Davey Bonneman over there, we coached baseball for about 10 years together, and he will tell you that I overthink things way too much. So uh, he's a very small guy, you'll see him over there. <laughs> Um, but <laughs> he was good enough to, to tune me up every once in a while. I'm sure he'll tune me up after this. <laughs> um, just, here I go. Um, just a little uh, housekeeping. If you tend to have too much to drink tonight, please take a cab or talk to your family. Get a ride home. Uh, we don't want to mar the stay at all. Just uh, enjoy yourself to the utmost, but uh, get, your home, get yourself home safe. Uh, so like I said, I overthink everything. This is one of those days, as a father, you wonder how you'll feel when you find out that your child is getting married. Uh, for me, at first, it was pretty disconcerting. Uh, when I thought about Jay getting married, you know, but as I overthought everything, I came to the realization that I felt this disconcertion because she grew up on me. Uh, that was pretty tough. Um, once I recognized that, and I discovered it's actually very beautiful knowing that uh, your child wants to spend their life with somebody. Uh, and I'm glad I'm here to celebrate that. Um, <laughs> I can't say I've spent an enormous time with Greg and Jamie together. Um, but I can say that uh, when I see how obviously in love they are and how truly compatible they are, I, uh, I know in my heart that these two kids were meant to be together. I want to welcome Greg into the, the extended Thomas and Bellamy family. Um, I, I think Karen and I and our families both agree that Greg's going to be a great son-in-law and be great for Jamie. I'm going to take a few minutes to brag about my, about my daughter. Uh, I think that's my job. Um, since Jamie was born, she's been a sweet and beautiful part of my life. Jamie grew up quickly. She was mature beyond her years at a very early age. She excelled in whatever she did, you know, scholastic, scholastically and athletically. I remember Jamie and I used to have these kind of philosophical uh, chats, and I remember telling her one time, she was about 18, that she was one of the magic people in this world. And I think I confused her with that, because uh, it's not something that she would really have seen in herself, but uh, why I said that to her is, you know, for the following reasons. Like, when Jamie was in grade eight, she was uh, the valedictorian of her graduating class. And she gave such a beautiful speech. Uh, again, mature beyond her years. And after the speech, Karen and I were chatting with her teachers, and we had teachers actually thank us for the opportunity to teach her. You know, that, that was Jamie. Uh, when Jamie was 16, a very young age, she came to work at uh, the factory which I work as a student employee. And in that factory, I'm a supervisor, and anybody knows periodically some people don't like their supervisors. <laughs> Not me, obviously, but uh, but uh, some of those people that maybe had negative feelings about me would be the same people that would come up to me and, and remark what a, what a wonderful kid she was and what a hard worker and what a pleasure it was to uh, to work with her. That's 
That's the magic of Jamie. She is warm and wonderful to almost unbelievable levels. And when people meet her for the first time, they're immediately drawn to her and are quickly comfortable speaking with her. You know, uh, when Jamie graduated high school again, the valedictorian, uh, her speech was unbelievable again. Again, teachers after that ceremony, I told you I was gonna brag about her. Uh, teachers after the ceremony thanked me again for the opportunity of taught her. People love to be around her. It's not because of who she is, whether she's a valedictorian or an athlete, it's because of how she is. This is the kind of person Jamie is and always has been. This is why I think she's magic. And this is why, Greg, you're pretty much the luckiest guy in this building. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, today has been a great day for me. Uh, I want to thank my family, uh, my friends who traveled here. I want to thank my children for putting up with me, but mostly, most of all, I want to thank my wife for 20 years has put up with my addiction to baseball and pretty well every other idiosyncrasy that I have. Um, I look at my beautiful daughter down there, I see how happy she is. It makes me truly happy for her. Jamie. I want to let you know that I loved you from the day you were born. And I held you in the arms for the very first time that day. And every day since then, you have been and will always be my little girl. And for that, and apologies to the late Craig Lou Gehrig, today I feel like I'm the luckiest man in the world. So I forgot my beer, so now if it pleases you, <laughs> I, I would appreciate it if you would toast my little girl, the beautiful bride, is now Jamie Lynn Miller. this little piece of full scap and a very youngster had uh, printed it and said to mom and dad and then when I opened it up it said I love you from Greg P.S. thanks for having me <laughs> So I would, uh, I'd like to say to all of you, thank you very much for coming and celebrating with us tonight because uh, this is a big day. I'd like to thank Jamie's family for their contributions in making this a very special day for Jamie and Greg. It has been so wonderful for our family to get to know all of you and to see what a, a strong family bond you have and it makes us very happy to share our baby with you. <laughs> For those of you who know me well, you know that I am often thrilled and excited. <laughs> and <Happy. laughs> um, so today is really the big kahuna of thrilled and excited for me. Um, I said today was a special day so it's a good time to reflect on what makes Greg special, since it's his day and we're his parents. <laughs> we know him as a particularly warm and loving person. He weighed in on January 23rd at a, <laughs> at a solid nine pounds, 10 ounces. <laughs> And he immediately used his body, his big blue eyes, his smile, and no surprise, his vocals, to make sure you picked him up and held him for a long time. As long as he was in someone's arms, he was very happy. And so was the person who was holding him, because he exuded contentment. He continues to this day to use all of these charms to build a circle of warmth 
with friends and family. And I think you, all of you who are here, can see and appreciate that. <laughs> Greg's home has always been a place of comfort. In fact, he had to be dragged out to story time at the library, swimming lessons, and all the horrible things that we subject our children to. He did, however, manage to accept that he had to go to school. And at first he was really excited to follow Jordy and, and Kate to school. Uh, in fact, on, on day one he came home and he gave me a, a really, gave us a really good report of school. And the rest of this is really a true story because upon being awakened on day two, he was shocked to find out that he had to go back to school. <laughs> I already did that. <laughs> Despite this hidden homebody persona, he has always been interested in learning about other countries and cultures. Uh, he traveled to Japan, Germany, France, and England. We know the trip that turned out to be the happiest for Greg was the one to Scotland in February of 2011. <laughs> because between February and November of that year, he realized he needed somebody very special to hold him and to share his deep reservoir of love and affection. <laughs> he knew that he had found the person in Jamie, Tom's, and we know that they will build a loving and comfortable home together. Bob's going to carry on. <laughs> I also have an ad lib before I start to, from this from the uh, prepared remarks, and that's this, Jamie. Um, you know, I love you, even though you went to Governor Simcoe. Um, and I and I and I um, and your dad is very right to be proud of you. But I really need to mention that in 2005, my son Greg was the valedictorian of the. <laughs> The Sir Winston Churchill High School. Thank you. <laughs> so, so the two of you can talk. I'm sure it's going to be tough getting airtime between all of you. I would like to uh, take a few minutes to welcome uh, and recognize a number of people who've come from near and far to be with us on what is certainly one of the best and happiest days of our life together. Firstly, uh, my family, my mom, Margaret, uh, Greg's Nana. Um, still, um, still going strong at age unspecified. <laughs> and with us, uh, all the way from Ottawa, uh, mom, um, all we Millers uh, hope that we have acquired not only your genes, <laughs> because <laughs> Uh, but also your, uh, your enduring energy, your spirit, and your interest in the world. No occasion like this would ever, should ever go by without also mentioning my father, uh, who we all wish was with us here today. For those of you who knew my dad a little or a lot, um, you were fortunate. Uh, for those of you who didn't, I can tell you that uh, um, he passed on to his sons, and I guess I can only hope, perhaps in vain, that I've passed it on to mine, an example of being both manly strong when that was needed and a gentle, patient, and loving person when it was not. And uh, we miss you, Dad, very much. And we, um, of course, we also miss Greg's grandparents, Hector and Isabel today. They were wonderful, full of life people uh, with deep Cape Breton family roots that have been so much a part of our children's life as they grew up. They would have been so proud to see what all of their grandchildren have become and to see Greg married today. We are all pleased that two members of the Cape Breton clan, cousins Brenda and Brad McDonald, uh, all the way from Middle River, Nova Scotia, are standing in their place. Thank you for joining us.
I also want to recognize my brothers, uh, John and Bruce, my sister-in-law, Sue, and two of my favorite nephews, Todd and Drew, with their wives, Jamie and Candace. Uh, going to all of my nephews' weddings uh, was fun and a very meaningful and memorable part of our family's life. Um, and it is just great to have all of you here today uh, to reciprocate and join us on this really happy day for us. And thank you for coming all the way from Montreal and Ottawa and uh, Red Horse Lake. And as long as we're recognizing family, I want to say a few words about my other family. Uh, I'm actually a very lucky person. I've had three great families in my life. The one I grew up in, uh, the one I teamed up with my best friend in life to create, and the one I married into. Um, they have been so much more than in-laws um, to Barbara and Lillian and Ralph, Colleen, John, and more lately Wendell. You've been wonderful friends and supporters of our family. Uh, it, uh, being so much a part of our children's life as they grew up. And I think you've set a strong example for them of how important it is in life to be close to and support your siblings. Um, of all of the fantastic, sorry, I'm their dad, of all of the fantastic things about my kids, uh, <laughs> one of the best is their close relationship with each other. And I also know the importance of strong family has not been lost on my niece Jennifer, her husband Brent, and their great kids Julie and Brendan. It was an honor for our family to be a big part of your wedding, and it is really special for us that you, and lovely, that you are a big part of Greg and Jamie's today. To conclude, I, I want to pick up for a few moments on from where Kathy left off in terms of talking about the life of our young romantic Greg. When he was 11, our family went to England and we spent a few days in London. And while we were there, we were able to get rush tickets to, uh, to go to the West End to see the musical Buddy. Uh, and uh, being last minute tickets, we were literally in the first row of the theater looking straight up at the show. And Greg sat there and he was just mesmerized. And for a year or more after, we had to uh, play just hits mini cassette on every family car trip for the whole trip. Greg, Greg, loved, Greg loved Buddy, and he probably uh, still does love Buddy. And so it seems particularly fitting tonight that I close with a few words from Buddy Holly that I think fittingly describe what my beautiful son Greg and his very beautiful wife Jamie have. I wasn't sure if I was going to sing or not, so... <laughs> So, I'll, I'll, I will sing the first line. Sometimes we'll sigh, sometimes we'll cry, but we'll know why only you and I know true love ways. And that is for you guys. Um, I will, I'll, I'll come up to the mic later and sing the whole thing if you want. Perhaps not, eh? Um, but Jamie, welcome, welcome, welcome to our family. Uh, you guys obviously were absolutely perfect for each other, and I know that you'll have a very, very happy life together. Thank you very much. a little bit on my dad's speech. Um, he talked about his, his father and mother, who luckily my Nana is here tonight, and she can share with you one of my favorite stories, which is the love story of my grandparents, which is one of the great stories in our family, and I won't share it now, but I do feel like there's a bit of magic there that needs to be passed on to Jamie and Greg. And luckily they both share a love of craft beer, so I have with me my grandfather's beer opener, that was a bottle opener uh, from the CP Rail where he worked. Uh, I think my Nana gave this to me 
long before I legally could drink beer. <laughs> and maybe wondered why I would want it, but uh, I'm glad that I have it and that I've held on to it until now so I can pass it along to you too. And another acknowledgement that must be made is that the time is currently 8.44, and Harrison Stewart is still awake. <laughs> and Duncan Bowden still has all of his clothes on, and we are just so happy that you could both be here. <laughs> yeah, and Harrison also has the clothes on. He wants to, to be acknowledged for that. Thank you, Harrison. <laughs> um, <laughs> So now I will invite up the co-best men, Jordi Miller and John Barr. Good evening. Um, we're almost at the dance floor portion of the night. Uh, just want to say that John and I are just just chuffed to uh, get the chance to live up to the legend of Gregory Robert Miller, or as you may know him better, Big House, Greggy, Thrill House, a Rotary Club member, should be acknowledged, and uh, probably the funniest person you've ever met. Now, if anyone uh, could be expected to uh, have not one, but two best men. Uh, perhaps it is the big house, capacious structure, uh, a veritable stadium.